This is the Geekworm X1011, and it's a 4 NVMe SSD carrier board for the Raspberry Pi 5. It's interesting, uh, Linus Tech Tips, I think, did a video on the CM3588, which I'll link to in the description. Uh, but this is kind of the Raspberry Pi 5 version of that. And uh, it has a few trade-offs that I'll get to. Um, but you'd think, you know, this is NVMe SSDs. These are faster than SATA hard drives, right? Well, they are individually, but when you put them behind this particular chip, and I'll tell you more about it in a minute, uh, they actually are not as fast as my setup that I'm using the Ultimate Raspberry Pi 5 NAS. And uh, I'll talk about why. Uh, this board is kind of a case of the good, the bad, and the ugly, all in one little device. And that doesn't mean I don't recommend it, but it does mean that there are some caveats that you'll want to know if you want to put one of these together like I did. Uh, for the good, one thing I really like about this design and some of the other new Pi PCI Express device designs is this double 90 degree bend FFC cable. Uh, it's a good quality cable. It's marked with uh, which side you plug into the Pi and which side you plug into the board. Um, and it gives you access to the micro SD card slot. So some of the earlier boards didn't do that and you end up not being able to put in a micro SD card if you want to. Uh, the build quality is also pretty good. It comes with all the screws you need. It's very easy to assemble. It took me, I don't know, like five minutes to put everything together out of the box. As far as the bad goes, uh, a lot of that centers around this chip. It's the AS Media uh, ASM 1184E, and the chip is not a bad chip. It's a great chip. Uh, it's used all over the place. It's a PCI Express Gen 2 switch, so it's kind of like an Ethernet switch. You have one lane of PCI Express Gen 2 on the Pi 5, and this switches it so you can plug four devices into it, just like if you have a router and you plug four computers into the back of it, it's using a switch to do that. Uh, however, the problem is that this is limited to Gen 2. The Pi is Gen 2, but you can upgrade the Pi to Gen 3, which gives you more bandwidth. Gen 2 is 5 gigatransfers per second, Gen 3 is 8. Uh, the problem is that you're splitting up 5 gigatransfers per second, let's say 400 to 500 megabytes per second, among all of these drives. Each drive individually can saturate that, so you're really bottlenecking things. On the flip side, you're getting four drives, so you can have RAID, you can have redundancy, uh, you could do like RAID 5 or RAID Z1 and have one drive of redundancy, so if one of these fails, you won't lose your data. So that's the benefit, uh, but on the flip side, you're really hampering your speeds with this particular board. Um, that's a limitation of the Pi, really. So in my real-world testing, I did a RAID 0 array, I could get 430 megabytes per second maximum. Now, latency is great because these are NVMEs, and you can also saturate that 430 megabytes per second like all day long. Uh, so really the, the biggest limitation there, uh, the, the bad of this chip is, is limited by the other I.O. on the Pi. So it has a one gigabit LAN port. You're going to saturate that before you even start saturating these drives. You could plug in a 2.5 gig network adapter like this one. This is a TP-Link, I think, or no, it's pluggable. Um, and I tested this and it, it works, gives you 2.5 gigs all day. Um, I'm actually using one of these. I'll have a video on the main channel about uh, how I'm setting up my little NAS, that's what I'm calling it, uh, to be a complete backup of my big HL15 ARM NAS in the, in the rack room. But anyway, you know, that, that's, that's the bad thing. The ugly thing on this board is the way the power circuitry is designed. It has, you might notice there's a DC 5 volt barrel plug jack here. Uh, and the Pi also has a USB-C power input. If you look at their wiki, it says, don't use both at the same time. My guess is that they don't have any real protections. Maybe they do, I'm not gonna test it because I don't wanna sacrifice a $60 Pi 5, uh, but they might not have any protections in case you backfeed power by plugging both in at the same time. So that's kind of annoying. And I also don't, like, I don't even have a five volt barrel plug power supply. They don't, they're not that common. Usually they're 12 volts. Um, so I don't even have one to recommend. What I would recommend is powering it through the USB-C power input. And I was using, I'm testing this Argon Thermal 30AC fan cooler. It's about the same as the Pi cooler, but it's black, so that's cool. Um, and I'm also testing the Argon GAN gallium nitride or gallium nitride or whatever that is. The GAN charger that's a tiny bit smaller and a little bit more dense. Uh, and it's been working fine. It powers everything. But part of that ugly, so there's the power circuit, which seems very basic and might not be amazing and might not have backfeed protection. It also has these pogo pins. 
And uh, if you don't know what a pogo pin is, it's like it's like a pogo board, uh, where you know the thing you jump on. Uh, they have little springs in them that push connectors up, and they touch test points under the Pi 5. Uh, the test points for the USB-C power input, 5 volts, uh, plus and minus. And there's another one here. I don't know what that one's for. Maybe there's two ground connections or something. Uh, but it uses pogo pins, which they're reliable enough. People use them in a lot of devices. A lot of Raspberry Pis, in, in fact, use those. Uh, but it's probably not, like, the best, most reliable way, especially if you're going to mount this somewhere that's moving a lot. Like, if you put this in a in a van or an RV or something as a portable NAS, you're going to potentially run into issues as it vibrates and those pogo pins kind of move a little bit. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's it's ugly, but it's not terrible. I, I wouldn't classify that as a bad thing. It's just kind of weird. Uh, the thermals on this are pretty decent. I used my P2 Pro uh, to check on everything on the board, and really the Pi stayed under 50 degrees Celsius. This is in a 72 degree Fahrenheit. Sorry about the conversions there. Whatever that is in Celsius, uh, that's my room here. And uh, the, the hottest part was the chip itself. It gets up to 55 degrees Celsius, which isn't bad. Um, I might, if you were going to put this in an enclosure especially, I'd put a heat sink on that chip just to get heat off of it a little bit better. Uh, the whole board does warm up a bit, so I'm guessing there's a large ground plane in it that, that warms up. And uh, depending on the NVMe drives you use, some of them get a lot hotter than others. These don't get very hot, so they're, they're not too bad. Uh, but if you put it in a box, I'd put a fan on it, maybe slap a heat sink on that chip. Um, in terms of price and value for this thing, all in with everything in my hand and the power supply, it's 244 bucks. Uh, that is for 256 gig sticks times four. These are 28 bucks a piece. NVMe storage is not cheap, so if you're trying to get a large capacity NAS, this is not for you. Don't you just get a hard drive, get a couple hard drives and plug them in, or get get the Penta SATA NAS instead. Don't get something with NVMe because NVMe is fast and low latency. Those are the two things that it's best at. It's not great for bulk storage. But that said, this is tiny. It only uses like 14 watts or 12 watts or something. Uh, so that's that's an advantage. But 250 bucks. It's not a terrible price, but you're not. This is for a one gigabit NAS. You could get 2.5 with an external USB adapter, but then it starts getting bigger. Compare that to the CM3588 by Friendly Elec at 264 bucks for all the same hardware, and you know that one is going to give you four PCIe Gen 3 lanes, which is going to be a ton more bandwidth and has built-in 2.5 gig networking. So, from a hardware perspective, that thing blows this away. On the flip side. Hardware's not everything. You might already have a Raspberry Pi 5. In that case, this you know the value is a little bit different. Um, on, and, and also, OS support for the Pi, Pi OS itself is very well supported. On the CM3588, I've seen people using Armbian. I've seen people using custom builds of things. So that's something to consider. I think Open Media Vault has pretty good support for both. And I've seen people uh, already designing cases for the CM3588. I have not seen a 3D case for this yet. Uh, it'd be nice if they sold like a little metal case for it, but you know, whatever. I, I don't know. I, I can't really recommend this and I can't really not recommend it. You just have to look and see, is it right for you? I think the best things about it are it's compact. It works with Raspberry Pi 5, which is a very well supported board. It's built well enough that I wouldn't have concerns using this especially if it wasn't like a high vibration environment. Anyway, I think uh, for this third channel, we like doing crazy things here, so I'm going to do a new thing with my uh, my little outro. I'm going to say something, and you're going to guess in the comments what YouTuber I'm uh, mimicking here. So stay creative, and I will see you next time.